first time we hear him, he calls us to himself. He calls us to himself. Okay. Let me give us some time to talk. How can I get into it? It's just this. Maybe it's one of those yeah, things we have to share with everybody. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Initially, he calls us, and he calls us to himself. And when he calls us to himself, he calls us to leave our life. To follow him. Not just follow his ways, but follow him. It's a call to coming to know him. calls us back out into the world to help others. And, and then as you are called out to help others, others come in and hear God's call. It just continues to grow. What is God calling you to do in this season? doesn't sometimes receive your help. How many know that you want to help him in your way, maybe not God's way? How many know that sometimes men don't necessarily want help? is talking with the woman. The man is right there. How's come the man and the woman aren't talking? I don't know. I'm not sure what's going on there. We just get a, we get these snapshots in Scripture. We don't get the whole I imagine that the man and the woman will be in heaven. I kind of want to ask him, what happened? Yeah. How did it erode from this place? Uh, what, 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 I mean, everybody was talking. And they were talking about the one tree that was in the middle of the 
garden that the man had information about directly from God. But he didn't say boom, and he was right there. And, and it could be because the woman was deceived, right? The man wasn't deceived, according to the Bible. The woman was deceived. The man was just a rebel. That was his issue. Since it said, because it says in Timothy, it was the woman that was deceived, not the man. So the man had an attitude somehow against God, even at that point. Since the woman was deceived, what did she think? Our lives are going to be better if we eat from this tree. I think she thought life was going to be better. How many have had well-meaning people come into your life and take you in the wrong direction? How many of us not have done that with others? Well-meaning. Sincerity is not all what it's cracked up to be. Nothing wrong with sincerity. But we can be sincerely off. And some people overrate sincerity. To the point that if I'm sincere, then it's fine. No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Invited to church. I'll <laughs> <laughs> get here next week. Yeah. <laughs> Later on today. Okay. Here's the passage later in Genesis chapter 3. This is part of the curse of them not following God. To Adam, he said, Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you. And you will eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your brow. You will eat your food until you return to the ground. Evidently, work pretty nice before this moment. How many of you know that work is not necessarily good? Work isn't necessarily all that it's cracked up to be if Jesus is not in work. It's downright terrible. Because Jesus later comes along and, we, and breaks the curse. How many know that? He broke the curse of the law. That's what the scripture says in Galatians. But keeping the law does not require faith, but self-effort. For the law teaches if you practice the principles of the law, you must follow all of them. How many, how many, how many are you doing that well? You following every law, every jot and tittle? Some people, that's how they operate. You don't do this, you don't do this, you don't do this, you don't do it. Why don't you do this? Why didn't you do this? How's come this happened? Why didn't you do it? I'll tell you what. None of us. I can't. Little said to me, when you point your finger out, three fingers are pointing back at you. We can't measure up to our own standards, let alone require somebody to measure up to standards. Yet. Christ paid the full price to set us free from the curse of the law. He absorbed it completely as it became a curse in our place, for it is written, everyone who is hung upon a tree is doubly cursed. Jesus, our Messiah, was cursed in our place, and in so doing, dissolved the curse from our lives so that all the blessings of Abraham could be poured out upon even non-Jewish believers. That's us. We're not Jewish believers. So, we can go back to the garden, and we don't have to have the thorns and the thistles and the toil and the sweat and the and this is a horrible thing. We don't have to go there if it's in Jesus. If we truly follow God no matter what we choose as long as it's not in the world. Called by your employer to do something illegal or immoral. Every job has 
the potential to be an absolute flat. Or worse. Do you know that's our that is the choice that you and I have. Either it's gonna be a blessing from God, or we're just gonna go back under the curse and take with great respect and honor. Okay, what do you think about that? By God saying that, what is God, what is, what's being said here? When you submit to your employers, obey them, and submit with great respect and honor, guess what you're doing? You're coming underneath God. Because he's asking you. This is coming underneath God. Serve them with humility in your hearts as though you were working for the master. You're not working for whoever. Not working for Michael's Bakery. Not working for Bueller's. You're working for Jesus. Always. Let's say always. Always do what is right, and not only when others are watching, so that you may please Christ as his servants by doing his will. Serve your employers wholeheartedly and with love, as though you were serving Christ and not men. Keep going. Be assured that anything you that is beautiful and excellent will be repaid by our Lord, whether you are an employee or an employer. Okay, just know that God's going to reward you. His job ain't worth it. Yet that's not what you're supposed to get out of your job. Worth. Your worth is not in your job. Your worth is in Jesus. And as for you employers, be as conscientious and responsible towards those who serve you as you expect them to be towards you. Neither misusing the power over others that has been put in your hands, nor forgetting that you are responsible yourselves to a heavenly employer who makes no distinction between master and man. Still remember that. One pastor's wife, David Eshelman, his wife, they had, they had adopted, they had, they, had ch they, had, they had children, but they also had an adopted child. And the adopted child, I think, got in the face of Helen a lot in different ways, would always challenge her. She said, it must be easy being a parent. You're always in charge. You don't have to answer to anybody. You can, you can sort of do what you want. You know, you're the one that calls the shots, and she said, you know what? You need to know this. i got to answer to God. I have to answer to God. I'm not in charge. You know what? It's actually easier to answer to the employee, the employer, than it is to God. I think.
depends on what translation. No, yeah. it's oh, Galatians. Excuse me, it's Galatians 5. Thank you. Thank you. Galatians 5. Thank you. Yep. This is the pa a Passion Translation and the Phillips Translation. That's what this thing is. This thing is. This thing is. Translations talk about slaves and masters, but, I, but that's but that's not what these translations talk about. Employee, employer. It's a blessing or a curse. How many know that what you bring to the table at your work and how much that it's a blessing or a curse has everything to do with you? Unless they're telling you to do something immoral or illegal, then it would be good to quit because you've got to obey God rather than man. But as far as work is concerned, it had to have it be a blessing or a curse has everything to do with you and I. Whether we're going to do it Jesus' way or we're going to do it our way. Do you break the curse and make it a blessing? I would challenge you. Give your boss, give your employer the Jesus treatment. That's what it says. You're not serving your boss. You're serving Jesus. Picture Jesus there. Don't look at the... the our, when they talk, it's Jesus talking. When they ask you to do something, it's Jesus asking you to do something. Unless it's immoral or illegal. Give them to Jesus. Treat them like you treat Jesus if he's asking you to do that. Give them the Jesus treatment. That's what you got to do. Because it says you're not serving them, you're serving the master, right? Obeying your boss can be hard. Yes, sometimes our boss doesn't seem to know what he or she is doing. How many understand that? How, but how many have accused God of that? I don't think God knows what he's doing either. I don't think he does. You know, I, yeah, yeah I, I sort of follow him, but I really don't follow him at all. What can make it even more difficult is that sometimes we just don't want to do a particular job and it didn't happen to us. Right? So those who are employed should listen to their employees. They obey the instructions of the greatest thing. Serve them with humility in your Serve them with what? With humility in your hearts. What does that mean? Come underneath them. As though you are working for Jesus. Serve them with humility in their heart, like you were working for Jesus. This is from the Passion Translation. Those who are employed should listen to their employees or obey their instructions. Obey. Let's say all the words. Let's everybody say obey. Obey. How many like the word obey? You like that word? If you don't like the word, then you have a problem. But you've got a problem. Obey is good. Come under Jesus. When we're doing this, you know, this can this can be this can be a great experience. Number two, pleasing God and doing His will is our primary word goal. Pleasing God and doing His will is our primary work goal. That's why we are at work. is to do His will. That's why we're coming under and giving them to Jesus' treatment. Because that's God's will. Your daily work duties are God's will for your daily work duties. Your daily work duties. Are God's work is, is God's work for you. Is God's work for you. That's his will for you. That's his will. Why? Because we have we're supposed to obey. We're supposed to obey our employers. So that's God's will. And if you don't obey, you're going outside of God's will. 
Now, it doesn't mean that you don't have real conversations. Maybe you got a brand new boss that's in there and is telling you to do something stupid. You know, you say, you know, all due respect, and you, with humility, you, re, you submit things. If they're not asking you to do anything illegal or immoral, you just say, I just want to let you know. I do believe there's another way. I'll do it because you want me to do it. But then you're, su you're submitting to Jesus. You're submitting to Jesus. Right? Mm -hmm. If they don't want to listen, you know, eventually, if you're around there long enough, they'll say, you know what? I think he actually knows you know something what he's doing. I think. Keep in mind that God has a plan for the people around you. God has a plan for everybody around you at your work, right? And you're at work undercover. You're at work undercover. They they think you're there because that's because that's your job. They think you're there because it's all about. But as a Christian, we don't get a job primarily because it's for money. We don't get a job primarily because I want fulfilled in life. We get a job. Yeah, it's about following God first. I, I did the same, you know, I believe the same thing about doctors. When you get sick, you, I just don't, you don't run, I run to Jesus first. Jesus, what do you want to do? I got Jesus healed me. And I've talked to Jesus about it before, and he told me, I want you to go to the, the foot doctor. Because my back hurt. My back hurt. I had a major back problem. I don't know how many years ago. And I had a major back problem. And God told me to go to the foot doctor. I went to the foot doctor. He lined my feet upright with some inserts. And all of a sudden my back didn't hurt anymore. He told you the same thing about Robbie. Yeah. Right before her growth plates were finished growing. And if it hadn't happened at that point in time, and he was afraid it might too late, you would have had to break every single one of her toes and reset them. But since she was still growing, they put inserts in and her foot grew right. But you go to God first. You don't go to the doctor first. Then I doctor, doctor ain't got you. go to God. Just because just because some opportunity opens up doesn't mean that that's the door you're supposed to go through. How many understand that? Just because an opportunity goes up, you don't go through that door and accept that job. Do you sense that this is God's leading? That's a huge deal. And Ian and I, when we were both engaged, we both had jobs, and we both, when we actually got married, we both did have jobs. I don't recommend that, that path. As a whole, I don't recommend that path. But you know what? I had I absolute peace in my heart that this was God's will. Had a little more, had some money. We went on a honeymoon, and you know, when we got back, she had a. We looked, we looked for different places. There was a teaching position up in Milan, Ohio. And up to that point, five years prior to that, all the. I was just playing trumpet for five years out on the road on a cruise ship and this and that. I could play trumpet. I looked at Milan, Ohio, and I said, I don't perceive that they need trouble players. <laughs> but I'm going to pray on I said, that's about all. I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. We prayed about it. We said, that's the place to go. Uh, we stayed in Norwalk. Milan's just up the road, about five miles. Uh, apartment in Norwalk. I didn't have, you know, she had a job. I didn't have. I went to the main employment place and they said, no, the only, the only party that I know that could maybe help you is John Corbury. He does that stuff with music in this town. I said, okay, well, I went to his house and he went home and we were going out and then his car backs up. He said, well, did you just go to this house? Right after he says, you know, I was in my shower this morning. He said, I'm going to send a 
what you got to do is just go, yeah, you got to operate either on your own smarts, which I figured out, if I'm in the center of it, eventually I'm going to screw it up. Have you figured that one out yet? If you're in the center of it, you're going to screw it up. If Jesus is in the center of it, it's going to work out. I'm a simple dude. Now, I don't necessarily always operate that way. I need help. Gave me a good woman. I need <laughs> and I need to listen to her. Here at work, undercover, God is working in and through you. You need to move from simply working to sitting and embracing work to sacred. And I tell you what, I went through a lot of learning. I learned humility and coming underneath somebody in that job. When you're out there playing trumpet for five years, did different shows most every day, sometimes a couple shows a day, go to this place, you set up, you play for 45 minutes, and people clap for you all the time. Who claps for you when you do your job? No, you should have just done it. I had, I had five years of clapping. What do you think that did to my ego? I deserve better. I already had this. And you know, you, you're, a, you're, you're playing music, man. People clap for me. People like me. Give me absolutely no hassle. I just do what I enjoy. And I don't do a whole lot of other. That's all I do. It's really a rather simple life. God had me in the right job. I'm not saying... I enjoyed the job. I felt like quitting numerous times. And I knew if I was going to quit, I'd come out from under God. Because God led me to that place. He made it clear that I was supposed to be there. Not until it was obvious. And I said to him, God, I was ready to quit at different times. And I said, Lord, I don't care how long you stay here. And normally when I have that kind of attitude, God, God's, God's almost interested in moving me on. Because I, I learned about everything that I need to learn at that spot. We need to be doing as well as our primary work. Always do what is right. And I don't even know that you're watching. So that you may please Christ as his servants by doing his will. Doing his will means obeying and following and humility coming under. Serve your employers how? Wholeheartedly with love. Boy, I, it, is, it is about Jesus first in there, isn't it? It's got to be. It's got to be. As though you were serving Christ. And the bosses are accountable to God for their actions and attitudes. I have a couple. I have, I'm my own boss. I've got my own company. I had uh, one account. I have a couple of machines in the hospice up there. On, 585 at Akron Road. I can't have them there anymore because the room that I had it in, they're going to make offices out of it and they were going to, I could have, they thought the two machines would go in this other room and they didn't measure too good. And it's not going to go in that other room and, and I said it's got to be away from this panel and can't happen. So I had, anyway, Keith helped me to leave me in the back room last Friday. And I appreciate that, Keith. Um, but as soon as I found out about this, that was a week ago Friday. I said, Lord, This is your boo. 
I'll just do my best to try to hear him. 